My name is Frank Collada. I am the last living gangster in Las Vegas. 360000 dollars armed robbery that I committed and got away with. So I put six bullets in his head. And he ran. I looked at the gun like, did I miss this guy? I knew it was pressed against his head. He was a scared. I don't blame him. I met him in Stateville Penitentiary. And once a week he would kill an inmate. We just put him in a bag, and nobody ever said anything about it. It was just another guy who committed suicide. I was a product of my environment. I didn't know any better. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mob Vlog. Adam Flowers here on December 15th. It's Redna's Day. And uh, we started a couple of minutes late because, well, I don't know where Red is. So that's that's why we started a few minutes late. Anyway, I hope all of you guys are having a good time out there. We're going to see if Red pops in here. He has a link and all. I'm just hoping he overslept by a few minutes. So um, with all that said... We're here today to talk about the making of this channel. I thought it would be appropriate seeing how yesterday would have been Frank Collada's 83rd birthday. So, um, so I figured, well, let's let's do something and talk a little bit about Frank today, a little bit about Frank Collada, uh, show you guys some pictures, some videos, and just kind of talk about how the channel evolved. So... Uh, so if you're new to the channel, this could be interesting and entertaining. If you guys have been sticking around and you've been prescribing since the very beginning, uh, then, hey, this also could be very interesting to you. So um, you may hear some things that you hadn't heard before, uh, and you may see some things that you hadn't seen before. So a uh, quick shout out, though, to George in Franklin Park. Uh, thanks, George, for coming out here to Las Vegas and taking the Vegas mob tour while you were here in town. Um, so again, thanks, George. George and his wife, they're from Franklin Park. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Adam Flowers here, Mob Vlog, and I just got done doing another another mob tour today, this time with George. And George is from Franklin Park. What'd you think, George? It's great, great, very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. Now, George, you went and saw a show the other night. Who'd you see? Penn and Teller. And was this better than Penn and Teller? Oh, by far, way better. There way you go. Better. And I'm not even doing magic, guys. <laughs> hey, thanks again, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for having us. Have a great day, guys. Prescribe. Prescribe. All right, awesome. So, uh, thanks again, George. It was really cool having you out here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to just do a couple quick shout-outs. If you guys, you know, sometimes people... Sometimes people get a little upset because they're like, man, I mean, all you're doing is your shout outs to the people in the beginning. If you're watching this and it's not live, just just fast forward, you know, just bump bump it forward five minutes and uh, and, and you'll get into the meat of the uh, stories. So uh, quick shout out to um, Art Kelly. Art Kelly, if you guys watched from the beginning, uh, he was in some videos. Uh, uh, he was a good friend of Frank's. And, um, and art, well, our art could use everybody's thoughts and prayers because, uh, um, uh, because he lost his son. I'm really sorry, art, um, man. I mean, I'm really, I'm praying for you and your family and Chandler and everyone. So, uh, I know you gotta be going through a really rough time. So if they're all you guys keep art in your, uh, in your thoughts, evil rev, you'll watch this later. Brett, Duke of Dunhurst, good to see you. Frank Ferraro, Rocco, 4JK, pop music. Uh, Gene Ledesma. Hey, Gene. Nice to uh, see you here. Eric G, Chicago Joe, uh, on time like clockwork, not. I was having a mic difficulty too when I was getting this stuff. Carl Foster, Cindy Workman. Um, <laughs> You thought you were dreaming. Um, we're doing well. How are you doing, Cindy? Jim Magnifici, uh, Mo, Don Chichio, Di Porzalo, Rip, uh, Rip Frank, 
um, Mike Alexander, David Grimpy, Mickey Griggs, uh, Slapsy Maxi. Are you implying Red is dead? No, I'm not implying Red's dead. I'm implying it. Red overslept. He sent me a text. I could show you. He sent me a text earlier, and uh, and uh, he it was like at seven in the morning or eight in the morning, and he's like, oh, I was up all night. I'm just going to bed. So I don't know what the hell he was doing up all night for. But uh, anyway, that that's what. Uh, that's what's going on. He'll probably jump in at some point here. We'll, we'll get him in in a few minutes. Uh, Chris Edmondson, Mickey Griggs, Stephen, uh, Stephen Beach, Sean Pender, Bill Wash. Uh, love you too, Art. Uh, Mickey Griggs, Street Stories, uh, Jim Yeager. It's good to see. Uh, it's good to see all of you. And if, if B, BSJ, uh, that's uh, uh, Brady. Thanks uh, for coming out here again, Brady. And uh, doing the tour, Juice Loan, Jimmy, Mickey, Griggs, yes, all of you guys, Carmen, Ventimiglia, Ventim, Ventimiglia, I think I got that right, Ventimiglia, uh, yes, rest in peace, Michael Laf, uh, Lafigliola, good to see you, and uh, it's very, um, very, uh, very good to see all of you guys. So, <clears throat> let's start at the beginning of how this came to be. So how did mob vlog become to be mob vlog? And I'm going to tell you. And so let me just grab some photos here. So this is it all the way back at the beginning, uh, pictured there, uh, down in front. Let's start in front. Uh, front right is Frank Collada. Then to his left in the middle, that's Denny Griffin. And then to his left is Dennis Arnoldy. Okay. Now behind Frank, Top right is Robert George Allen. Uh, Robert Allen was a producer here in Las Vegas, and he is the one who created the Haunted Vegas Tour first in, I think, 04. The Vegas Mob Tour launched in 2006. And, and then... Uh, 2000... Anyway, the, the Mob Tour is in 06 is when that launched. Now, this picture was taken at a book signing event here in town. It's a public library, I believe, if I remember correctly, is where we were, uh, where we were somewhere in Summerlin. So that's when uh, the time, about the time, this maybe was in 06 or 07, possibly 07, that that photo was taken. Uh, by the way, behind, next to Robert in the back, that's me. That's a younger me. And then to my, well, one more person with the white hat on, that's Jack. Uh, Jack's still here in town, and uh, he was one of the tour guides for Robert. He did the ghost tours. He was also an entertainer, a magician in town, and uh, he's, he's 86 now. He's still around, though. And then the last guy with the sunglasses on, that's Bob. Uh, that was Robert's cousin, one of Robert's cousins. Okay? So that's what, uh, uh, this is when it kind of started. It's when I met Frank. And then, uh, and most of you probably know the story, but that's when Frank got mad at me, okay, and uh, got mad at me, and then that was, geez, Flowers developed a taste for food since that picture was taken. That's hilarious, Slap, Slapsy Maxie. They actually started putting hamburgers in the water out here, and that's what happened. So the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, so the tour ran for, for um, I don't know, about 10 years. And right around, oh, I want to say about 2015, 16, is when Robert Allen uh, and Frank, Frank moved from California to Vegas. And so he moved here. He was doing a freelance limo driving service. And uh, as, a matter, as a matter of fact, yeah, he was a freelance limo driver. There's, oh, oops, there's a... There's his old business card. It's got his name on there, Joseph Curtis. That was his witness protection program name. So he moved out here and started doing cameo appearances on the mob tour. And Robert Allen called it the Frank Collada Casino Tour. And then Robert, he would do the tours with, with Frank. And, and then Robert got sick. And so Robert passed away. And when he did, um, I... I stepped up and said, hey, let's keep the tours rolling. So we did the ghost tours and the mob tours and, 
and we're opening more tours. We just opened a new one, the Underground House Tour, and we're planning on other ones as well. Uh, but that's what we did. And, uh, and, and, and Frank, uh, it's kind of a really long story, but Frank got upset with me back in like 2008 and told Robert, I don't want Adam doing the tours anymore. So, okay. So, which was great. It worked out well for me because I got to go do what I came here to do, which was magic. So I performed up and down on and off the strip for about 10 years and Robert died. So we took the company over and I started doing the tours with Frank. And here's a picture of Frank. And I give you an idea of, I says, now there is when I really had an appetite for food, uh, Slapsy. That's really when I, <laughs> I mean, I was getting kind of big there. But that's us in front of the casino house in the background. That was one of the first tours that we did uh, after Robert died. After we did that tour, um, we did tours. I was booking them, so it was we, we did them in limos. Just was one of Frank and I sitting in a limo. Even did one in a party bus and, and got a bus for Frank with a stripper pole. He felt perfectly at home. See him hanging on to it right there? It's perfectly at home, Frank. No, we, we were going around doing a lot of these and it was it was um it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. And so uh so we had our ups and downs. Frank and I had a little ups and downs here and there, but that's that's any relationship's gonna have, you know, an up and a down here or there. And uh so, so <laughs> You like that one, Bud Fun one? Hamburgers in the water, that's right. Juice Loan Jimmy, Mr. Allen looks like an oil man. An oil man, I, interesting. I never thought of an oil man. Fitting tree in the room, hit that like button. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, really do appreciate that, guys. So, <clears throat> yeah, Slapsy, more chins, more chins than in a Hong Kong phone book. That's, that's it. So... I mean, I'm talking about when I laid around the house, I laid around the house, okay? <laughs> yes. Don't I could keep going. I, I had to use a hula hoop for a belt, man. You know what I mean? Damn, damn hula hoop for a belt. So I knew I was getting big because I once when you can't fit in your van anymore, not your pants. You can't get in the van quite anymore. That's when you know you're getting big. When you gotta tell if you size by your vehicle. So, so, uh, back to the story. I'm getting off track. So it was around 2019, end of 2019, Frank did a, uh, an interview on Valuetainment. And when he did that on Valuetainment YouTube with, uh, uh, it, it got, I don't know, a million and a half views. And I remember our tour guides were coming to me saying, hey, have you seen the video with Frank? Have you seen the video with Frank? Said, what video? The YouTube video? Uh, YouTube, okay. I had a YouTube channel since 06, so you got to understand, I put stuff up on YouTube and, and it didn't, you know, it was, it was a place to put something so you could send somebody a link of a video, okay? I used it to send links to agents and producers and whatnot with my magic stuff. That's what I was using YouTube for. That was what I... And think there was all that to be made, you know, money anyways to be made. So when, when that video went up, Frank's phone started getting so many calls. It was unbelievable. Frank was like, you aren't going to believe how many calls people are calling and calling and calling. And I want to say it was in 2000 and I think 12 and then again in 14. Robert Allen produced MobCon. MobCon was a mob convention in town. So, uh, hey, G, sorry, G Money. Thanks again for coming on the tour. Really do appreciate it. Uh, it was fun having you and your wife on the tour with me. Uh, if I didn't tell you, uh, he's, this, is, this is George from Franklin Park. And uh, thanks again for coming on the tour, George. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Adam Flowers here, Mob Vlog. And I just got done doing another another mob tour today, this time with George. And George is from Franklin Park. What'd you think, George? It's great, great, very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. Now, George, you went and saw a show the other night. Who'd you see? Penn and Teller. 
And was this better than Penn and Teller? Oh, by far, way better. There way you go. Better. And I'm not even doing magic, guys. <laughs> hey, thanks again, man. Thank Appreciate thank, it. Thanks for having us. Have a great day, guys. Prescribe. Prescribe. Yeah, thanks again. It was cool having you on the tour, and uh, you got to see version 2.0 because I got to tell you, we uh, we changed it up a little bit in uh, the last uh, changed it up a bit in the uh, last year and put some some new things on the uh, on the tour. So so uh, back to uh, back to this and what happened. So Frank wanted to. He said, let's do a mob con again. Mob con. Oh. And I thought about it for a, c- a couple of weeks. Denny Griffin was interested in in uh, in getting involved with it. And, and so I thought about it. I went, man, you know, conventions are a pain in the They're a total pain in the ass. I mean, to sit there and have to uh, put everything together. And it's just a lot of damn work for two days. And I remember Robert Allen telling me that it was, it was a dealing with the different personalities wasn't the most pleasant thing okay job to have to do so besides corral and the cats it's you know it's not a it's not an easy easy thing uh so i went back to frank and said i I don't think it's a good idea and this was in december of 19 and we were brainstorming at home and and I kept I was thinking because after that, you know, after Frank was on that that YouTube show, uh, Valuetainment, I kept thinking maybe maybe the goal isn't to get onto um, isn't to get onto the the other channels. Maybe the, maybe what we should do is start our own. Hmm, makes sense to me. So we did. We started the Vegas Specialty Tours channel. We started a macgyvered media which is how we were building the channels and then we started what uh what what at first we didn't even know what what the hell we were going to call it and uh and then it turned and evolved into i shouldn't say it turned and evolved into it Uh, let me show you the very first thing that i shot so i called frank i said frank let's just start a youtube channel we'll grow it and frank looked at me he said uh all right, like maybe that'd be easier than going. And thank God we did because everything's shutting down. If we'd had started working on the convention instead of the YouTube channel, the YouTube channel would have never happened. And the convention, all that time would have just been a big waste. We would have worked on it for 12 weeks, started marketing it, and then have to stop and, and refund everything. And Because that's what happened. And, and no casinos, everything, every convention. So we were lucky that we picked, let's do YouTube. Really, honestly, lucky. Here's the first footage I shot of Frank. Very first. And you guys have never seen this stuff before, so here we go. We're rolling, okay? And I'm gonna start, uh, we'll start editing this. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, no, we're, we're recording to the camera, right? We're, yeah, we're recording. So when you talk to the camera, look at this, yeah. right? That lens and... Um, Hey everybody, we're here at Frank Collada's house. Frank, the number one question people ask on the Vegas mob tour is, is the mob still in Vegas? Yeah, I'm asked that question quite frequently. And I tell people the same thing over and over again. There's no mob, no longer in Vegas. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want this on? No. Take it off. Let's start over. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. Why waste time? (laughs) Okay, so the number one question that we get is... Is the mob still in Vegas? I'm asked that question quite frequently. And I tell people the same thing over and over again. There is no more mob in Vegas. It's wiped out. If there were a mob in Vegas, do you think I'd be living there? So we stood there at uh, at his apartment and, and we shot the, uh, the first bit of footage. Which, by the way, we... We had done a few events prior to this where where I interviewed him publicly uh, for keynote speaking uh, um, engagements and, and other other things. Here's a quick clip of him talking about how he was sent out to Las Vegas. This was probably shot in 17 or 18 because you're going to see, yeah, my, my waist size was the equator. 
So uh, Joe Lombardo comes up to me. Now Joe Lombardo's Tony's boss at the time, only because Tony's living in Vegas. And he said to me, congratulations. He sticks his hand on, I shake his hand. I said, for what, us getting raided over here? And he says, no, you're moving to Vegas next week. I looked at him, I said, I hadn't planned on it. He said, well, it's already set. You're going to Vegas next week. I can't say no or I'm dead. Okay, so we were doing these, uh, these different engagements. And then we started the, the channel. And once, the, once we got, I don't know, three episodes in, I remember I was sitting one night and thinking, um, because we used a little intro music, it was uh, Funiculi Funicula, and and that's what it played with the little coffee cup on the tray, bringing it in and all. And I liked the little jingle. I liked the, the tune. And I said, it needs words. It's got to have words. So I called up a friend of mine, Tom, and we started talking about it. And I remember Allie came in the kitchen and we're, we're all three of us were sitting there and we're going, well, how did what did it go? Like, colada, colada, grab your favorite brew. I think Tom came up with grab your favorite brew. Um, Cause the second line was going to be ask a question. He'll answer it for you. That was, that's what we came up with. So it was like, how are we going to tie in? And I remember just that, that, da, 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 it was like, what are we going to put there? And it was like, da, 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 it was like, we need four syllables, da, 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 right? And the mafia kind of stood, it worked. So the mafia would put that, and then you better hit prescribe if you know what's good for you. Anyway, that's how it evolved. Here, listen. Colada, colada, grab your favorite brew. Ask a question, he'll answer it for you. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia, the mafia. You better hit prescribe if you know what's good for you. Drinking a cup of coffee with Frank Colada. He'll tell you a lot. He's Frank Colada. Look at the camera. And... Let me turn that way down. Okay, and if you're talking to the camera, you're looking at the camera, you're leaning in and out, do a little bit of movement. You know, as I was saying, I was over there, I was up and down. Hope you enjoyed this segment. If you don't, go scratch your ass. Colada, colada, grab your favorite brew. Ask a question, he'll answer it for you. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia, the mafia. You better hit the scribe if you know what's good for you. Drinking a cup of coffee with Frank Colada. He'll tell you a lot. He's Frank Colada. So that all came to... I remember I went over there the the first night, and if you go back and you look listen to the listen to the intros and the videos, it originally was recorded on a pop mic that just plugged into my phone, and it was a it was a pop mic. And then eventually, I went over there and we recorded it with um, with a, a good condenser microphone, and that's when it started to to sound a little bit better, uh, and and it had had a full range in it. So. That's what happened in, uh, in how the song came to be in the, uh, uh, in the video. Kissy Cat, it's good to see you. Hey, guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Kissy Cat and uh, Cindy Workman, everybody. Awesome. Uh, it is good to, yeah, the power tie, Cindy. I'm glad that you're enjoying this, Sean Pender. All right, so back to this um, Brew City. I, I like that tune as well. I really did. Like I said, I kind of wrote part of it, and, and I had some help from, from some friends. So, um, Michael Graham, yeah, my, my, wasn't fat there. I just had so many pigeons and doves and rabbits stuffed into me, uh, my, my jacket. That's why I was looking so big. Good. I like that, Michael. So, so once, so once, uh, once, once we started recording videos and all, it was like, what do we do next? You know, what do we talk about next? And, uh, and, and so we would, we would look at the comments in the videos and read them. And we started asking questions. Hey, it started inviting people to ask questions about things. And I'll be honest with you guys. When we started doing this, my knowledge about 
um, the Chicago outfit was um, what I had what I had learned from Robert, what I run, learned from the scripts, and what I had learned from the books that I had read. So when Frank started giving all this firsthand knowledge, which by the way, the pepper mill, the reason that, that the idea also came about was the pepper mill. Um, refused to think, how did you lose the weight, diet or surgery? Well, that one where I was sitting there on stage, I want to say I was like 310 pounds, okay? And what I did was I stopped eating all the garbage. <laughs> stopped eating garbage, literally. No, I, And then I, I dropped like 20 or 30 pounds, and then I started doing keto. Uh, refuse to think. Refuse, refuse and think. I don't know what, what your name is. Ref, I always call you refuse to think. But um, anyway, that's what, that's, that's what I did. I did keto then. So... Um, help thinking you guys Justin Justin gold all right so interesting comment Justin um, and we we could speculate all day long uh, you think that he would have been here if he isolated better um, and and I'm gonna tell you something Justin that when when I say that he stayed in and didn't go out at first was is an understatement and it wasn't until a few months in that he finally was like, you know what, this is, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go do a tour or goes, you know, and, uh, but he, he still, um, we could speculate all I want. My dad might still be around too, you know, if, if he didn't get it. So, you know what I mean, Justin, we could sit here and talk about that all day and go, well, what if, what if, what if everything's for a reason. Okay, there is not nothing random that happens. So, back to my thought here. So we didn't know what, what to talk about next. I was like, what are we going to talk about next? So here's a quick clip uh, of him talking about Casino being in the movie Casino, okay? I want to talk about the movie Casino. As you well know, I think you know, I was a consultant, technical advisor, in this movie, plus I acted in the movie. I got in this movie uh, as, as an acting part because they uh, wanted to use, Marty liked to do originality. And uh, being that I knew so much about that life and that story they were about to tell, he wanted to show the real life killer that actually performed the killing in real life and portrayed on the screen. But first of all, I want you to understand something. I do have immunity from prosecution, or else I wouldn't be talking about this stuff. So I portrayed the scene of there where I killed a guy in Costa Rica. That really happened in Las Vegas, Nevada. A little bit of Marty fabrication, but that's just a genuine scene. But it didn't go down that way. It went down another way. Nick, Nick Pelagio twisted around a little bit. But the real story is, is that he was killed in the house and then dumped in the pool. He wasn't chased from the house outside. Okay, so there you go. And that's what, uh, uh, that was one of the videos that we did. So we kept doing videos uh, about this thing, that thing, uh, and, 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 and his life, life stories. After tours, sometimes we'd sit down and, uh, and have lunch, and Frank would start telling me these stories. And he would talk about Mad Sam, or he'd talk about this guy, or tell me this story, or that story. And every time I would get done with one of these lunches, you know, I would go home and I'd tell, I'd be talking to Allie, going, hey, you hear this, that, you know, it was a pretty interesting and uh, thing. And so it was, we should document these, because there's so much, um, there's just so much, uh, Nothing's chance. You guys are right. I'm sorry. I'm if if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we would all have a real nice Christmas. We can't live our lives on ifs and buts. That's very true. Ifs and buts. Uh, Michael Graham, you have a tour question. Have you ever surprised anyone living at these locations with the mob history of their house, restaurant, etc., that they weren't aware of? Uh, interesting question, Michael Graham. So no. 
Um, no, we we never uh, surprised somebody living at one of these locations. Uh, you know, with the history of their house, we we stop at a few places on the mob tour. Um, one of them is a filming location from the casino movie, and that's uh, on that particular tour. Um, the the owners have enlightened us with more information than we possibly you know it seems like they've they've lived in the home since you know the 70s so they know the history the neighborhoods and all that so um and and i recently uh, tony spilatro's house which uh i do not know who the owners are um and and i don't know if they know the history or not i would i would imagine that they would so the realtor knew about it so why wouldn't they um Yes. Uh, Cindy, yes, I'm okay. Sorry. My, my brain's just, it's, it's, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. And, uh, so my, my uh, brain is just a little tired. Uh, William Kirchmeyer, uh, I don't know Kirchmeyer. I don't know where he is. Uh, he was supposed to be here today, guys. And uh, he didn't, didn't show up, which is unlike him. Maybe he's just, maybe he's just, uh, sleeping in. Like I said, he texted me today, this morning and was like, I'm going to bed right now. Yeah, he called me at 7.57, which would have been 8.57, 9.57. Let's see. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's... I know I sent him everything, so... It would be a... It, it's unlike him to oversleep, but... Uh, um, thank you very much, uh, Michelino. Ferrara, I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I would imagine that red is, but, uh, no. Let's see. And I wanted to tell him too. I was excited because when I logged in today to do this, red's been asking me if I, you know, after or before we go live, could we do it on his channel? Right. And, and could I be on the channel with him? Well, the thing there was no way for me to use the software that we're using to do this program on this channel. Um, there was no way to do it for him to do it until today. When I logged in, they gave me a, a, a uh, they gave me an option to add another person onto the uh, onto the account. So, so now Red's going to be able to use this and, and do the same things and put photos up and videos up, and I'm going to be able to help him. Uh, set some of that stuff up. So, uh, Don Chichio Di Porzalo, thank you very much. I'm glad that you are enjoying this. And Shakir Mahmoud, have a Merry Christmas too. I uh, appreciate that. Um, and Bet Red went to enjoy some In and Out. Uh, no, actually, when Red was out here, it was Windy City Beefs and Dogs. That's where Red wanted to go. He just wanted to get. Uh, he just wanted to get a. Uh, yeah. So, um, Ace Bellatro, I don't think that Frank would be pleased that Red has a show with you, Adam. Red talked a lot of shit about Frank. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that because we're going to get into Red, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about Red. It's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite interesting, but I'm not done talking about Frank yet. So, but we're going to get into this, guys. Um, uh, Shakir, I hope that you're okay. I uh, hope that you're or you're uh, going to be all right. So, chatted with Red on Monday on his channel. He said he'd be on with you exactly. Uh, so, any any. I hope he's all right. I hope he just overslept. Something must have kept him awake all night because that's really unlike him to you know call and go. Hey, I'm just you know going to sleep right now, and I should be up in time. We'll see. <laughs> so, but I figured that since the topic was this. One way or another, and, and because I took, already took two weeks off, truth of the matter is, this uh, the last two weeks we didn't do a live. So, yeah, um, I, I just didn't want you guys to uh, not have one. Cheryl, man, thank you very much. You're awesome. Uh, what's over your left shoulder on the background? What's with the globe? That globe right there that you're talking about, Rocco? That was part of the front. That's the facade of the old Stardust. So um, that's that's what it looked like. That was the Stardust sign over here. Which, see what it looks like, guys? The Stardust sign? That was supposed to represent an atomic cloud, a mushroom cloud. Because in the, in the uh, 
in the 50s and said Stardust opened in 1958. And in the 50s, they were still doing nuclear testing just 60 miles northwest of Vegas out of the uh, Nevada test site. So, uh, so they were still, you know, doing tests. You could, you could literally, the casinos were advertising it. Come to Vegas, watch the atomic explosion. We'll have an atomic party, atomic cocktails. A Miss Atomic contest happened three times. Uh, not only that, the, uh, the other thing that they uh, uh, did was there was a tour company that would, for $3, you could get in their bus and they would take you 10 miles from the test site so you could sit up in their perch and you could watch and get a nice close-up view of the explosions. It's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of crazy. So God knows what the fallout did to these people, but you know, government said, Hey, you get a little radiation on you. Have your friend sweep you off with a broom or take a shower. And you'll be fine. <laughs> a little uranium in your makeup woman, the ladies, you know, here you go. That'll make your skin glow. Won't it? Yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> seems that Frank was forced to go to Vegas. He wasn't in the mob, just an associate. Seems weird that Frank was forced to go to Vegas. He wasn't in the mob. He was an associate. Well, uh, you guys just heard the story as I played it, the, the interview that, that we did. I want to say it was at the Four Seasons. That interview, that interview was at the Four Seasons. And it was for the best, listen to this, it was for the best heart surgeons. That's what it was. It was like the top 200 heart surgeons in the United States. Um, Frank and I were introduced to, and I can't remember his name, but he was the doctor who successfully did the first baboon heart transplant to the little girl. I don't know, it was back in the 80s or something that that happened. Anyways, we met all these these all these all these doctors they were really awesome, and when Frank, let's see, it was, it was right after Frank and I um, started working together closely in twenty. Let's just call it. We sat down in twenty sixteen at the end of twenty sixteen when I bought the uh, Vegas Mob Tour, Haunted Vegas, and and the Good Springs Ghost Hunt. I remember it was though. I remember from from the first. So here's what happened. I'm gonna. I've never told this story. At least not on here. I know I haven't. So I have no idea. Debakey. I don't know, Doctor Jarvik. Oh, Doctor Jarvik. Thank you very much, Slapsy. Uh, there you go. That's the doctor. Uh, I think it was Debakey. I think it was. It could have been Jarvik. I don't know if it was which it was, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, the, uh, the point is, is that Frank a few months later was diagnosed with, um, congestive heart failure. So, so I reached out to, he was like, call those doctors and see if, you know, one of them can, you know, special, right. Specialize. I did. I called the doctor and, you know, I never told Frank what the doctor told me. Um, I told Frank, uh, what the, I didn't tell him what the heart surgeon told me, um, the, the heart surgeon. And I never said it to Frank cause I figured it would, uh, deflated any hope of any chance. You know, you don't want to do that to somebody who's, who's been diagnosed with a, with a terminal illness. You just don't want to do that. You want to, you want to keep that person as positive as, as absolutely positive as, as, as you possibly can. At least in my opinion. So, so yeah, I remember I called the doctor, that surgeon. And he took, he took the time to sit and talk with me. And, uh, and I told him everything that was going on that the doctors had been telling Frank. And, and he said to me, it's, he said, your friend, he said he's going to go into the hospital. And he might get better and get out. And then he'll go in and he'll, you know. But eventually he's going to end up getting pneumonia. And, and then he's going to die. Well, it, like, it was like months, a few months later, he got pneumonia, double pneumonia. I remember Joey remembers his brother, his, his, he came out here. It was serious. I never told him though, what the doctor said. The doctor just said, you know, this is what's, what's going to happen. It's just, it's inevitable. It's eminent. 
I said, yeah. I remember though when I first met him, we sat down when I first got the the uh, the tours. We were sitting there, Robert Allen's uh, widow, and uh, we were sitting there signing papers. And I looked at her and I was like, because of that incident from years years before when Frank got mad at me and, and told Robert, I don't want this guy doing the tours anymore. So I got a, uh, so I looked at her and I said, well, who, who's going to call Frank, you know, and tell him, you know, that I've, I'm going to be running the company. So she called him and she said, yeah, you remember this tour guide? He's very nice young man. And he, uh, he's a very nice young man. And. You may, he used to do the tours, and I could hear him in the phone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See there? Put him on the phone. <laughs> and I picked up the phone, and he said to me, Yeah, yeah, he said, I remember you. He said, what are you doing later today? And I said to him, uh, I said, I'm busy signing papers. How about tomorrow? I said, I, I got time tomorrow afternoon. He said, meet me at Ichabod's Lounge. So I went over to Ichabod's Lounge the next day, 2 o'clock. And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was a little nervous. Um, there's no reason not to be, but I, I guess there was, or I should say there was no reason to be nervous, but I, I was a little nervous. Oh, and he said to me on the phone, he said, meet me at Ichabod's tomorrow, 2 PM. And I said to him, all right. And he said, listen, come alone. Don't bring anybody with you. Probably he's more like, don't bring anybody with you. So. That made me a little, uh. so I went there the next day and walked into Ichabod's and there was Frank sitting at a table, of course, with somebody, right? <laughs> you come alone, but I'm going to have somebody. I, I love it. So <laughs> I, I don't know if it was Steady or if it was Lewis. I, I, I don't remember. And Lewis, he couldn't remember. He doesn't remember the incident. I thought it was Lewis though. So Frank was sitting there. He said, ah, come on in, sit down, sit down. And so I sat down at the table and he said, first, I want to, I want to, I want to congratulate you on getting the company. And I said, well, thank you, Frank. He said, okay, second question. Oh, quick. Uh, uh, thanks so much, Brady. Appreciate it. Uh, and uh, watch the rest later. Thanks again for coming out here. It was, it was fun meeting you. Um, he said, for, second question. Now, do you own the company 100% or are you working with that broad? <laughs> and with that broad, he was meaning was, uh, was Deborah, which she's a wonderful woman. But, you know, that's how Frank talked. So, so I said to him, no, I bought it as 100%. And, and uh, he said, well... Congratulations. Next question. Which friggin' bank did... No, he said, which fucking bank did you rob? Started laughing. So, and then we sat there, and I, I literally, we, we had we had some lunch. We talked about the tours, about the, the Frank Collada Casino tour and how it was being run, and he was telling me, you know, I want to keep doing these private ones on the side, and I'm like, I have no problem with that. I'll sell them for you. Or I actually, I told him I couldn't sell them for him. I would simply push people over if it was a, you know, couple, because we only ran it twice a month, ran every other Wednesday. That's what Robert had it set up. So everybody had to book on that day. If they wanted to come to town and do the tour, it had to be all on that day. And I think it was 150, 150 a person. So it was 300 a couple to do the tour. And I said to, uh, I, I said to Frank, and at the time, I think the mob tour tickets were a hundred bucks. Now they're 120, but they were hundred dollars at the time. If you do come out here, however, use the code mob vlog, whenever you buy tickets, it'll give you 20% off. So then it's only like $95 a person. So that's what, that's what happened. We, um, we sat there, had lunch and I looked at Frank and I said, you're, you're only getting 300 a couple. I said, you're Frank fucking Collada. Like you should be getting $500 a couple. Oh, bullshit, bullshit. That's nobody's going to pay that much. I said, Frank, I, I, 100%, 100%. Because what he had worked anyway, I, I don't want to get into all that. 
uh, all those details. But he started, uh, he believed me, you know, like they, he actually started believing me and, and started listening and going, all right, and started charging more. And he got it. And when that happened, I said to him, and, and this is this is a picture of Frank and I, right, when that's about that time period, okay? And not about that time period. That was that was in, I, I think that was in November of 17, uh, rather, uh, sorry, December of 16 is when we shot this. If not, it was January of 17. And we shot it before Frank got the double pneumonia when he went in the hospital that first time it was serious. So serious. We didn't, I mean, so I remember Lewis, Lewis say, I mean, he spent so much time with Frank after that, taking care of him um, and helping him out. But this picture right here, you guys see the intro video where, you know, Frank's talking and, uh, and what we were doing didn't realize it at the time what we were doing right there i can't even i'd love to tell you where we took that picture but unfortunately i'm not allowed to um but that's a super cool place where we were super super elite what we were actually doing there uh back then was shooting the video for the uh um for the las vegas mobster which that's what we were doing we were shooting the pizza box video didn't even realize it and at the time, I thought, well, we're just going to shoot an interview to sell on the tour, okay? After the tour, you want to buy the DVD, it's, you know, $20, $30, whatever. And that's what the whole idea was at that point. That ended up evolving into Coffee with Colada. So when, when the idea came about months later, and this is after Frank got out of the hospital, this picture. There he is. So... Uh, months later, that was that day we were sitting outside an Italian joint here in town and he was signing all of these. He was, he was autographing all of them. Okay. And that's what he was doing. So that day, I remember bitching about all the, the boxes. Was it 250, 250 boxes? Yeah, it was two boxes of 125. That's what we had. So that's what it evolved into. And in uh, and the channel launched, and and then uh, as you know, uh, you you know just evolved into what it what it is now. Frank got sick. You got all got sick. It's funny, you know. Um, Frank called me when he was in the hospital in July, and he said to me, you know, you need to uh, you need to go on the channel and tell people what the hell's going on. And so I sat back. I just I was sick for three weeks. And so I just, I sat back outside on the porch and I did like a 15 minute video that Frank was in the hospital, but I told how him and I met and I talked a lot about some different things. It's funny. I went back and watched it last night and, I, and I never do. I honest to God, guys, I don't go back and watch these videos. I don't, unless somebody, you know, unless somebody's says, you know, oh, you said this or that, or there was a, okay, then I'll go back and review it. But I don't sit there and watch them. I, it's long enough for me to see him make them, you know, just then I'll listen to them. So maybe I should every once in a while. I did last night and I learned a little bit about myself. <laughs> I I did. It's, it's crazy. Uh, Michael Graham, that's a picture of Adam and Frank. He looks like Herman and Grandpa Munster. Oh God, that's too funny. That's hilarious. I want to tell you something. I'll look at this picture. It's <laughs> Grandpa and Herman Munster. Um, here I see. Yeah, here I'm leaning over, so you can't really see the the difference. Here I'm standing up next to Frank when we're standing. Here. Um, somebody else asked that. Uh, how tall are you? Oh, Cindy, thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart. That is so nice of you. <laughs> Send that super sticker. Appreciate you. Uh, so, let's see. How tall are you, Dennis Paulson? So, Dennis Paulson. Um, I want to say. Well, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm six foot five, and in that picture right there, I'm about six five, and I'm about uh, probably about two fifty five, two sixty there, somewhere in there, um, is where where I was in that. But a, anyway, that yeah, it was a little bit bigger than Frank. I was slightly larger. Uh, it's funny because the first time. 
did uh, Frank need money or was he wealthy from the lim limo business? Well, that's Frank's business. And I don't want to get into, you know, I don't, I didn't know his business. I didn't let Frank know all of my business. So, you know, that's just, you know, that's just, that's his business. So what can I tell you? I mean, I just don't want to get into other people's business. Yeah. I, I, Wow, 117 in the room. Yeah, Jim, that's awesome. It's a great gift. You received the pizza box, Don Berlin. Yes, it is a cool... You know what? The, the box was really... Well, I remember when I went to Frank's house with... Uh, I didn't even have... I didn't even have the box. I, all I had was a mock-up of a pizza. And I said, look, the foam pizza will go into the into the box. And, and then what we'll do, Frank... And I had the gun already, too. So I showed him the gun. And I kind of made made a mock up uh, pizza, but the foam comes out, and then the little revolver's in there, and it's hidden inside the stuffed pizza, and uh, and then the little USB stick, the revolver, okay, and then the video, the Las Vegas mobster, is on the uh, is on the on the stick, the USB stick. That was the original idea, and then of course you know the disc, because you got to have the the movie, the Las Vegas mobster, which looks like the top of a See that the bottom? You can see the whoops, the Las Vegas mobster right here. And that goes into the into the thing. So now you have the pizza, and the pizza is the disc. And the, all right, Frank loved the idea. He thought it was really cool. Um, he thought it was really a neat, neat idea. And and that's that's how we we said well, let's shoot this first video. And anyway, back on track. Let me read some of your comments, guys. Uh, for your information uh youtube yeah well they do some on youtube they do uh chain weaver i thought it was 30 but um we should set up a venmo you're right uh and you were a show dancer i was a show and you were a show dancer um that's that's funny because yes i uh was there <laughs> Yeah, that's back when I had a mullet. So, <laughs> so that's back when I had a mullet. Um, Kissy Cat, I got to see Adam work the Fremont crowd. He was performing magic and very good. Really, Kissy Cat? You watched me out on the Fremont Street? Seriously? You watched me do a, a, my act out there? I mean, it's very possible that some of you may have. I mean, I, I probably did a two, four. I did like five or six sets a night. They were 20-minute sets. Because I had to do them in between. I had to do the, the timing on them to do two of them an hour and then have time for that light show to play for 10 minutes. So, uh, Bud Fun One, I'll put it down in the description of the video. I'll, I'll, I'll put together a, um, I'll put together, I wish I could tell you guys what the Venmo was, but I don't uh, have one. Bobby Bag of Donuts, it is uh, good to see you too. Pam Ingram, what a cutie. Um, Bud Fun. Kissy cat. Yes, the floating cigarette. Wow, so you watched you've you've watched me actually do that, huh? There's a waiter, there's a gun in my pizza. That's funny. It's hilarious. You guys are too uh too funny. So I hope that uh that you guys are enjoying this. And uh I hope that you guys are enjoying this uh this episode today. I know I'm enjoying doing this for you guys, so I, oh, Bud Fun One, thank you very much for that super sticker. That's really cool, man. Appreciate that. Uh, wait, waiter, there's a gun in my pizza. Are you still running your tours, Scott Burkott? Yes, I am still running my tours. As a matter of fact, it's like it's like Vegas Mob Tour version 2.0 now because we've we've just beefed it up. And uh, hey, George from Franklin Park recently. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Adam Flowers here, Mob Vlog. And I just got done doing another another mob tour today, this time with George. And George is from Franklin Park. What'd you think, George? It's great, great, very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. Now, George, you went and saw a show the other night. Who'd you see? Penn and Teller. And was this better than Penn and Teller? Oh, by far, way better. There way you go. Better. And I'm not even doing magic, guys. <laughs> hey, thanks again, man. Thank Thank appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for having us. Have a great day, guys. Prescribe. Prescribe. Bobby Bag of Donuts, if you're making a homemade pizza, you better save me a piece. <laughs> uh, Chi-Town, Chi-Town Savage, where is Red? 
So Red, I don't know. I think he overslept, guys. I'll be honest with you. I don't want you guys to think that that Red Red's uh, uh Red and I uh just I think he overslept. I have no idea. So RV Doc Mob Vlog kicking ass. Very cool. But fun one. You can join and become a member. Just look for the join button and hit it. Yeah, you can see some behind the scenes uh a little behind the scenes uh action if you guys do the uh, hit the join button. So with all that said, you guys have uh, been a lot of fun today. Any of you have a, um, uh, any questions before we jump off? It's about an hour and I have, to, uh, I have to get to work. Adam, are you going to interview me when I go on the tour? Well, of course, Pam. Any of you guys come on the tour, if you, do, if you guys are out here and you do the tour, I would love it if you guys uh, would, would let me uh, take a little uh, testimonial video after the tour. As long as you liked it. If you're going to say the tour sucked, then no, of course not. <laughs> but then again, none of you would say that. It's a really good tour. So, and I don't say that because I do it. I say it because it, it really, truly is. Uh, go read the reviews from the, the people, the people of life. Here, listen to Greg. Hey, everybody. We're here at the Tuscany. Just got done doing the mob tour with Greg. Greg was on board. Greg's been a prescriber for a long time. What'd you think of the tour, Greg? It was wonderful to actually see all of the locations live as you're rolling by. Great job here, Adam, on giving us the narration right on score each time every block every stop sign you had it going man well thanks man Pre appreciate you <laughs> thanks for taking the tour and hey happy birthday he's <laughs> 70 years old today ah huh? that's good for 70. yeah <laughs> <laughs> take care guys um so yes this uh i'm glad that you guys have enjoyed this show uh, scott thanks scott he says you make the tour thank you very much i've heard that uh, i've heard that I've heard that a few times. So I've even had ladies come on the tour with their husbands and they're like, oh, well, you know, I never saw the movie Casino. I'm not interested in the, you know, the subject matter. And they get off the tour and they always say to me, wow, like, that was excellent. That was so well done. Uh, so, so it really is. And we do, we take pride in uh, what we're, what we're doing. As a matter of fact, we, let me show you guys something. Um, let me show you guys something that if you're not aware of, and, and Cindy Workman can account for this one and she can attest to it. And because, uh, here we go, share, let me share my screen with you so you guys can see, here we go. So there is VegasSpecialtyTours.com and right over here at the end is the newest tour. This is the underground house tour. It was recently featured in the Imagine Dragons video Monday, which you could see different parts of the house here. Um, it's through, through the, the bedroom and here in the kitchen. And uh, anyway, I don't want to play too much of that because I'll get a copyright strike here. And I, I really don't want to do that. But uh, here's some pictures of the house. And this is really interesting going through the house. Uh, when Red was out here, that's a grill. That's a, that's a grill that doubles as a, uh, looks like a boulder. Looks like something Fred Flintstone would have, okay? <laughs> but that's a grill. And this is 32 feet underground. And when you're underground in this house, there's the bar. You feel like you're outside when you're inside. And there's murals painted on the walls. And it gives you the illusion of being outdoors when you're indoors. And there's different settings for day and night and dusk and dawn and um, really, uh, really an interesting thing, but here's what I'm, I'm, why I wanted to show that to you guys is that we're setting up a new tour and, uh, this new tour is going to be the Vegas crime tour. And I'd love for you guys to put in the comments down below in the video of what, if you came to Vegas and went and took the Vegas crime tour, what you would expect to hear and see what you would like to hear or see. Put it in the comments and let us know. Uh, Kissy Cat, yes, it's right like the movie uh, from the movie Blast from the Past. I, don't, I think that the movie may have, the, the set for the Blast from the Past may have been um, based off of, off of this, this uh, particular company that built these homes because the person who built it, Jerry Henderson and the um, Swayze brothers, uh, Ken and uh, Jay Swayze 
were really the ones who started building the underground house. And then the, this guy, Jerry Henderson, like basically invested in the company and, uh, and built an underground house in New York at the World Fair in 1964, which supposedly is still there. Uh, it, it's there's records that it was demolished. There's records it wasn't. But in pulp, pulp, sorry, in pulp, in pop culture, there is um, an episode of CSI where they wrote into the episode. It's about it's about a serial killer in Manhattan. And he's living in the underground house from the World's Fair in 1964. So even in pulp, pop culture, there, you know, it's been talked about that that house is still there and uh, that it, they didn't, uh, they didn't fill it in. Richard Faverty, you have better pictures for the, uh, for you of the underground house. Richard, I hope you have better pictures for me. Um, I got to see what I'm doing in the next couple. Of, I'll probably be by the studio in the next day or two. I just need to see. I think, I think I'm off tomorrow unless I book a tour. But, uh, you know, I'll give you a call next. I'm dying to see him. Uh, Richard went on our, on our, first, um, our first group tour uh, through the underground house. And he's a photographer here in town. Richard's fo he's photographed every living president and a couple of dead ones. And he's, uh, he, he does all the magazine covers for the different, uh, uh, different, uh, magazines in town. And he's, he's shot photos of every entertainer in town. And he is, he's fabulous. This guy, he's, he's the best photographer, absolute best photographer in Las Vegas. So Gianni Russo trying to tell the truth could be nice. Frank Ferraro, right? Yes. Uh, oldest bars in Vegas, Mike Randolph, you know, that was that, see, now we were thinking about the dive bar tour where we would go to the atomic liquors, uh, champagnes, cafe, Dino's, uh, the double down, the, uh, uh, what's the other one out there that the, well, Frankie's Tiki room, my God, but the, but, but then, you know, the dive bar tour again, I don't know. That's putting a bunch of people in a vehicle that are going to get drunk. And then, and then you got, you know, you're driving them around and they're wasted. And I don't know. Um, Kissy Cat, there are so many preppers in Texas. Lots of bunkers. Funny you say that because Jay and Ken Swayze were both from Plainview, Texas. And that's also where Jimmy Dean, James Dean, was from. They were friends. Uh, there's a picture of them together uh, when they're, when they're uh, digging and breaking ground in the 1964 World Fairgrounds. Uh, so, and, and Dean Martin's with them. Um, sorry, Jimmy Dean's with them. Uh, you guys, the Binion scandal and how the the Binion scandal and how the skim worked. Right, that was one that we're uh, that's one that we were considering. Um, Ace Larson, did Frank have any last words to you before he passed? All right, Frank. So, <clears throat> I don't want to give any spoilers on the mob tour. But recently I changed the ending of the tour and I changed the end of the tour. Anything for you, Richard. Um, I changed the ending of the tour. We used to end with the story of, um, we used to end with the story of Stephen Caracappa and Louis Eppolito, the, uh, the uh, New York police officers that worked for the Gambinos and they ended up moving to Vegas. And then, uh, and then when it's, it's a long story, it's on the tour, take the tour or go look it up on Google, but you're going to hear about it and see where they were arrested on the tour. Um, they arrested them here in town. They posed as movie producers and arrested these two guys and brought them back. And, and anyway, that's what we used to end it with. We still do that story, but at the end of the tour, people ask me, uh, at the end of the tour, I turn and I tell him, I'm going to leave you with one last story. And I tell him, you know, oh, a lot of people ask me if Frank had any remorse for what he did at the end of his life. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put this to you as, as, as best I can. And that is, you know, all right, say you're a soldier and you're told, okay, run across that field and kill those five guys and then come back here. Well, you go do what you're told. That's your job. And Frank said it was the same with the mob. You're told you go kill that guy, you kill him, or you end up dead. So as far as him having remorse for all that, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Um, 
But I'll tell you this much. In the last like stint from the hospital, there was like three weeks before he went back into the hospital in June, before Frank did. And when I would go to Frank's place in his apartment, he'd, he'd pray for me. I'm just telling you guys what Frank would do. He'd sit there and say, oh, Lord, bless this man. Help this man, Lord. This is a good man, Lord. Help this. I mean, he started doing things like that. And then when I would leave, he would look at me and he would say, are you, are you an angel? Adam, are you an angel? And I'd laugh and go, come on, Frank, right? And I'd walk out and leave. And um, so when Frank, last words, to your question, Ace, Larson, uh, we talked on the phone every day when he was in the hospital, sometimes a couple times a day. And I would read him comments that people were writing on the channel, all those things, and uh, write comments in the... And I'd read read to him, and we would talk. If you're asking if he told me anything or something that you you know what I mean, then the, then the the answer is no. But we talked, and he said to me a couple times, "I don't think I'm going to make it out of here." I said, "Come on, Frank, you're going to be fine. You know, you're a bull." And um, he said, I want you here. So the day that I, I got the phone call, I, that, that this was, this was going to happen. Um, so I went there and I talked to Frank and they put me in the, um, in the ICU and they put uh, um, Rich, Richard. Well, I'm going to interrupt the story. Richard, didn't Frank see ghosts or nightmares of people he had killed when he was living in the trailer? Okay, so... Robert told me that same story that Frank had told him. And and, and Lewis told me something similar, too. Um, that he had seen ghosts. Um, and I don't know if they were dreams. Uh, Lewis, I think, said something about... It was after he had anesthesia, okay? He had done, like, some uh, deal in the hospital, and so he had some anesthesia, and uh, and that was kind of screwing with his head a little bit. That's what Lewis remembered anyways about him. Um, Frank did tell me that he had dreamt about Tony a couple of times. Uh, that was something that he did tell me. Um, but as far as being haunted or any of that, uh, that's that's the story I heard. That's the story I heard anyway. So I'm in the ICU and the nurse puts the phone by his ear and uh, he was awake. His eyes were open. He was looking at me and he, you know, I could tell he was, he was, he was with it and conscious of everything that was going on. And, uh, and I said to him on the phone, I said, Frank, I said, um, Hey buddy, I'm like, you know, you've been fighting your whole life in a lot of different ways and fighting a lot of different things. And, um, I said, it's, uh, you know, not, you don't have to fight anymore, guy. I'm like, you're, you don't have to fight anymore. And I told him, I said, you know, your, 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 your brother, your wife, and Lewis, I said, we well love you, you know, and you're, uh, and I said, and you're going to be all right. I said to him, you know, how you kept asking me if I was an angel. You kept saying, are you an angel? Are you an angel? I said, well, Frank, maybe God wanted me here right now so I could tell you you're going to be all right. You don't have anything to worry about. And um, he kind of nodded, like, with his eyes to me. So anyway, um, so if you wanted to know last words, and unfortunately it's not like he could say anything back to me because um, because he was on the, the ventilator. So anyway um rick lapont you enjoy listening to the stories but you can really tell that you miss frank like the rest of us um I, I do i really do and it's uh i do uh dpn stumbled on a gem yeah i guess so so 
Uh, yeah, he was in the bar scene. You're right, Michael Graham. That that Lou Apolito from uh, New York, he was in that bar scene in Goodfellas. He plays Fat Andy. They're walking around the corner, and he's like, oh, yeah, everybody was there. Tony two times. They called him that because he said everything two times. Hey, we get the papers, get the papers. And they were around the corner, and Fat Andy was there. And he goes, like, hey. That was, that was Lou Apolito. That was his line. Hey. <laughs> oh, stop. Thank you very much, guys. It is unfair. Um, I'm personally grateful that you and Frank allowed yourselves into each other's lives so that we could understand more intimately the intersanctum of that life. Yes, um, I, I think that it was really interesting to see him open up uh, the way he did about the things he did. So, all right. Well, guys, seriously, I have to go to work, and it's been so much fun with you today, and I'm sorry we missed Red. I'm sure Red will be around. Don't know where Red is or where he was, but like I said, I got good news for him, so now he can use StreamYard, so his his lives are about to get really, uh, he's about to kick him up a notch. Let's just say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him out a little bit with, uh, with it, but yeah, kick it, up a, kick it up a notch, see what's uh, going on. So yeah, and if you haven't watched Who is Red We Met, you can check that video out. Um, that was interesting because, you know, when Red first, you, you guys brought up Red and I said I would get to him. So I'm going to say something quickly about him. Cheryl Mann, thank you very much. I appreciate you. It's very nice. So uh, Ro Rocco for JK. Um, Rocco for JK on your over your left shoulder. What's with the globe? Didn't you just ask this? That globe right there, that was the facade on the Stardust. Um, or maybe somebody else asked that. I have no idea. But that's that's the front of the Stardust, guys. So, um, uh, Dennis Paulson, what's going on? How are you? Really, Adam, between you, Frank, and Red, you've preserved a lot of history that would have been forgotten. It's a public service to multipl and multiple movies could come out of it. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Gump. That was a, I said that, you know, having to, um, having, you know, oh, I just scrolled up, guys. No wonder I'm reading old stuff. I'm sorry. Dazzling Urbanite. Wow. Dazzling Urbanite. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Appreciate it. Sean Pender, glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, David Grimp, um, Gomf, Merry Christmas, guys. Hope that you guys are having a, uh, uh, I hope that you guys have a great, uh, really a Merry Christmas. We're only a week away. Like we're, no, actually we're uh, nine, nine days away. So, so yeah, we'll see if we, we, we might do something next week. We'll see if we do or not. The guy enters the Tangier. In the scene, uh, in a scene of casino, a pair of guys entered the Tangiers to try and rob it. And then Nikki walks up to him and says, yeah, I'm here now. And they left. Did Frank ever say if this really happened? No. Who's Carmine? We want to know who, who's Carmine, though, right? I'm over here now. You're over here? Yeah, I'm over here now. So, Carmine, yeah, he left. Carmine. Joseph Galata, thank you, Adam, for keeping my brother's stories alive. Thank you, Joe, for being, um, for being awesome enough to say, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's keep things going and keep things, ha you know, happening. Um, and I'm glad that you're doing better. So everybody's going to say hello to you now. So I'm not going to sign off for another minute. We'll give everybody a chance to uh, pop their comments up there. And uh, while they're doing that, I will um, play you guys one more thing. Brady. Brady came on the Vegas Mob Tour not too long ago. And hey, everybody. Check it. Uh, welcome back. And uh, it's good to see you guys. I'm out here with Brady right now. Brady, been a prescriber since day one. Oh, Found yeah. the channel in February of 2020 when we, when we were just getting it started. And uh, and finally came out here and did the Bob tour with me today and awesome some other tour. folks. What'd you think? Awesome tour. Yeah? Would you recommend it to your mom? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. You would? Okay. See, <laughs> yep. that's how often I use the F-bomb on the tour. <laughs> no, he's from Wisconsin. Seriously, you had a good time? Oh, hell, the best part of my trip out here Hell that's yeah. awesome dude <laughs> thanks so much for coming on man and doing the tour have a great day 
And the reason I said that's how many times I used the F-bomb on the tour is because in the movie Casino, it was used 422 times and set the world record for the most Fs put in a movie back then. It's been far surpassed a few times now by uh, other movies, but most of those Fs came out of Joe Pesci's mouth. So, um, so yeah, there's been there, but there's been movies. Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Wolf of Wall Street was one that, uh, that beat it. There was a documentary called The F Word. Uh, there's been... Yeah, there's been there's been a couple others too. Uh, Summer of Sam was one, and by the way, the uh, by the way, um, Adam Sandler's most recent movie, Uncut Gems, also beat Casino. It's like number one now. And I watched Uncut Gems, and I was, I didn't sit there and go, man, they're really using this word a lot. Like like the same how I felt back in. Uh, uh, 1995 when I first watched the movie, right? Or 96, I think I saw it a year after it came out because I didn't see it in the theater. I went to, uh, I watched it on VHS. I didn't know what the heck the movie was. I had no clue when I first watched it, what it was, what it was, I didn't even know it was a true story. So can understand why I, uh, yeah, why I'm so fascinated, fascinated with it, with Las Vegas. So Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And please, if you get a chance, um, if you get a chance, hit the prescribe button if you haven't yet. Okay? It's down below. And uh, join the channel. You get a little extra behind the scenes footage, different things. Check it out. It's fun. Uh, so, yeah. And I hope that all of you, whether we have an uh, episode next week or not, again, it depends on, on the tours. I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. And, uh, but think about things. What, what really, if we did a crime tour out here, what would you guys like to see? Put it in the comments below guys. And, uh, and, uh, yes. Uh, Michael Graham, the F word fettuccine. Oh no, Michael, the F word. Fuck. Thanks a lot, guys. It's been fun. And I've had a blast with you today. I hope to see you guys next week. So God bless all of you and uh have a great have a great day